In this video, I'm going to show you three exercises to help improve muscular strength after you've resolved cubital tunnel syndrome. Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian in Performance Space Sports Care, part of the locally world famous chiropractors in Costa Mesa, California. Now, if you don't know what cubital tunnel syndrome is, it's a problem with the elbow, it's with the ulnar nerve, and a lot of times people have hand uh, problems associated with it, grip strength issues. Uh, some of you may have experienced things like your fingers are clawing down like this and so on. So there's various different types of problems with the ulnar nerve, and a lot of times it involves the hand and gripping. So in this video, I'm gonna show you today that after you've resolved and made sure that you're actually being managed for your cubital tunnel syndrome, that you can maybe later start incorporating in some grip strength activities. Obviously be checked by your doctor first. These are just a few things that we use here at Performance Place Sports Care. Now all you're gonna need to actually accomplish this is just a book, something like a ball or a baseball, uh, and a weight. It doesn't have to be too heavy. And obviously people who have been dealing with this a lot longer, their hand's gonna be a little bit weaker than someone who just uh, had it uh, addressed. These are the first three things that we can use to change different grips. Now, if you guys are looking for more information about cubital tunnel syndrome and ulnar nerve problems, we do have an ebook that we created in the corner. Uh, it's, a, it's a good write-up and it covers a lot of different conditions, why fingers get numb, uh, why cubital tunnel tends to happen, and other conditions of the ulnar nerve not related to trauma. Now, before we actually start in the grip, the first thing you guys have to realize is there's zones of the hand. Now, I'm gonna get close to the camera just so we can get an idea of what's going on here. Now, the first thing that people do poorly, I think, in regards to actually creating uh, hand tension again or creating hand strength after something like cubital tunnel syndrome is they're, they're really not incorporating the zones of the hand. And so there's uh, zone one, which is gonna be the thumb, zone two, which is gonna be, uh, let's call them the dex dexterity digits, and then we have these guys down here, which are the last two, which oftentimes are neglected. These two fingers actually are very, very important in regards to uh, improving grip strength again, mainly because of this. Is, these are the connector with power. These ones are dexterity, these ones are dexterity too, okay? So typically when we go through these exercises, it's important to consider what zone one, two, and three are doing. Most of the time we're gonna be trying to create tension between zones one and three. Also important to think about later as well, or just food for thought is, you ever wonder why people only have calluses on three of their fingers unless they swing an object like a racket or a club? These are the power fingers. Okay, these two specifically. And so this is a, um, uh, a lot of times at Performance Play Sports Care, we, we check out people's calluses to see how they've been using their hand over time. Now the first one we're gonna start with um, teaching grip is gonna be what we call a lobster claw grip. It's one of the easiest ways that you can uh, separate the zones of the hand uh, with an object. And understanding this principle first is gonna get you further than any uh, fancy exercise that you may see on YouTube. It's just simply bringing the zones together. Uh, so the width of the book may matter. Uh, wider books may be a little bit harder than the narrow books. And so just pick a couple different books and try things out. Um, obviously, um, you want to do the hardest thing that you can do well. All right. If you can hold this book and it's hard, but you can hold it for like 10 seconds, that may be right for you. Um, but if you can't even get a good grip on it, you need something different. Or obviously, uh, seeing someone professionally is typically abides on these things. Um, also, um, you guys should probably know that there's, I mean, I think we can all logically think about this. Uh, if you want the best results, you see someone directly. Okay, YouTube videos are always nice for a little insight, but obviously you need to make sure that you've seen someone directly. So when we look at people picking up these books or plates, uh, we look at this section here the most, and we'll follow them around because a lot of times we'll walk around with the book. And so if you can see right here as I slide my hand off the edge towards the back of the book, some of you can see that I'm, uh, there's actually a gap. Like there's a gap right here. Like I'm, I can pick this thing up and there's still a gap there. I'm not using these fingers at all. And so I need to make sure that I'm actually bringing the zones together. And so when you bring these things together, it's easy just to think about sequencing first. And so I'm biting in like I'm a lobster. I'm trying to squeeze. Lobsters don't have fingertips. And so I'm gonna squeeze here. And when I lay these fingers down, I'm gonna start back and move forward. And so I'm gonna go from the pinky, ring, middle, 
index, and that's going to be uh, my grip. You can actually keep it more narrow too, but you have to make sure that you're ideally trying to bring these two points together, not the tips, the points. We'll get to the tips here in a couple minutes. And so we're going to squeeze, it's going to be pinky, ring, middle, index, and then we're going to squeeze the book and carry it, carry it around. The heavier the book or the heavier the object, the more you'll have to squeeze, and that's okay. All right. Generally, as long as you can hold it, that's what you want. But this is what we call a lobster claw grip. It's a very good starting point. The next thing we can use is, uh, this is going to be a baseball grip one. This one I like to think of like a claw game. We actually have the, uh, a ball at our office linked up with um, like a TheraBand around it. And so the TheraBand's pulling. Uh, we have people do rows with it here. And so when we start this one, uh, first, um, imagine like we took the ball and we sliced it in half, all right? Slicing the ball in half does not allow you to grip over the ball. We don't want you to hold this like a baseball. We want you to hold it like a half baseball, grabbing the widest section that you possibly can. All right. And if this is like one of those claw games, like the claw game, like sometimes you barely get a grip on the object. That's kind of what we want here. And similar to the other one, what we're going to do is we're going to start with these two, the, in this case, the tips. All right. The tips right there. And we're going to then put the ring on and then this one and then this one. Okay. It's really easy for people to roll the ball. They'll go here and then they'll roll the ball. So they really have pressure on the other ones, not these last few. And so starting opposing here is the best. And I can see my hand is already actually kind of cramping at this. So it's, it's kind of hard to hold. Now, what you can do if you don't have a TheraBand is you can take your other hand, hopefully a healthy hand, and try to steal it from this one, okay? And I'm not allowing it to, okay? I'm trying to pull pretty hard on this ball here, and I'm not trying to lose it, all right? And then take a break, relax your hand, because your hand may cramp with this, all right? And then we're going to go back in again. Part of the thing is the sequencing. We have these three first, and then we're going to get the remaining ones with the little claw game, okay? And then we're going to pull again. And then relax, and then pull again. You can even have a friend kind of make it a game, like have them try to steal it from you. Uh, this is pretty hard. Maybe I'm cheating myself, but I'm having a hard time. I, I'm actually shaking, okay? I don't know if you can see the rest of me, like my biceps contracting and stuff, and that's good. So we're challenging the hand and the entire limb as it goes up, because a lot of times with people who have problems with the ulnar nerve in the cubital tunnel area, cubital tunnel syndrome, is they, they end up having problems with the whole linkage of things. Uh, and then, uh, so ideally we start with grip strength with these people. Now the last one's gonna be a pistol grip, okay? It's really uh, exactly how it sounds. It sounds like you're holding a pistol, okay? And you, you guys can probably realize that all of these grips are a little bit independently different from each other. And they're things that we'll encounter through everyday life, okay? The easiest thing to use with this is gonna be a kettlebell. Okay, mainly not because I care about the kettlebell as much, but you can, you can slide your hand around it really nicely here. Okay, and so if we look from the side here, okay, I'm leaning into the kettlebell. And if you look from this side here, my wrist is still straight, I'm not cocked. Mainly because if I was going to shoot a pistol, I wouldn't have my wrist cocked. Okay, so it's a pistol grip. You're right into there, just like so. Okay, and run this way, we're going to do the same thing with the little one, the ring, the middle and the index, and then we're not going to lose it. And then you're just going to carry it around just like so. Okay. If you can't carry it around, you can actually grab it and then lean on it. Okay. This is the same grip, but it's compressive. All right. I want you to crack the kettlebell like it's dipped in nitro and you're trying to squeeze the heck out of it. If it feels hard to squeeze, keep squeezing. That's okay. Hard is different than painful. You can also use something like so. This one's actually a wider grip. Okay. Um, it'll work as well. I'll show you just from this region just so you can see. It's no different, okay? It's the same pistol grip. In this case, I have to make sure that I'm still linking the little fingers first and then, and then the big guys, okay? Um, this one you're gonna have to carry around as well. I'm not gonna be able to do it in the camera here, but essentially you walk around the room with it like this. It's a, it's a loaded carry. And so these are the three types of exercises you can do, again, um, different grips you can do, okay? We had a lobster claw grip, we had a pincer grip, 
and then we had a pistol grip. All very different and a very good starting point for getting some of the musculature back after dealing with something like cubital tunnel syndrome. Now, if you guys like that video, uh, please subscribe to the channel and thumbs up this video. We have more videos on cubital tunnel syndrome as well as other types of ulnar nerve problems on our channel. Uh, we also see people virtually and in person. Typically with things like numbness of the fingers or cubital tunnel, we like to make sure that people see us in person. There's a pretty advanced war workup we like to do at performance-based sports care be before we can establish where to start you. But we have seen a lot of people with numbness and tingling in the fingers, burning, stabbing, shooting, and so on. And we've seen a lot of people with problems in the elbow region as well. And so if you're looking for more information about how to contact us, all of our contact information is below. We'd love to work with you for it. We'll see you guys next time.